My family is threatening to use blackmail if I don't stop my wedding. They're planning to. My parents won't attend my wedding, and here's why. Short story, at 24F, I find myself in a heartbreaking situation. My parents won't be at my wedding. The reason? I refused to invite their friends, I'll call them the Scots, who made my life a living hell during the year I lived in their guest house. From false accusations to disrespecting my fiance, things have reached a breaking point. Fast forward to wedding planning and the Scots became a point of contention. When I stood firm on not inviting them, it led to a family fallout. Despite my attempts to mend things, my parents are boycotting the wedding. The long story is in 2021, fresh out of college, I moved to a new state for a job. Facing high rent, the Scots, family friends of my parents, offered me their guest house for a mere $300 a month. Little did I know, this seemingly sweet deal would lead to a year of turmoil. The Scots, longtime friends and business partners of my parents, had three kids. As soon as I settled in, the Scots became excessively involved in my personal life, especially with my relationship. The situation took a dark turn as they fabricated scenarios to my parents, accusing me of promiscuity, rarely being home, and even planning to secretly move in with my boyfriend. Their disdain for my boyfriend was palpable, treating him with passive aggression, condescension, and even making derogatory comments about him being adopted. The interference escalated with family meetings where they labeled me as a poor influence on their teenage daughter, criticizing my boyfriend who they had only met three times. And I have to add, my boyfriend and I don't drink or smoke, and we both have careers. My boyfriend is a perfectly good man and was always respectful to them despite their poor treatment. The dad of the Scott family went to the extent of even sharing his marriage problems and lack of life in the bedroom, blurring the boundaries of landlord-tenant and an inappropriate relationship. The breaking point came when the fridge in the guest house broke and they insisted I foot the bill for a $900 replacement. Their influence over my parents was significant, as my parents rarely had my back and sided with the Scots, constantly belittling my boyfriend without reason. By the end of 2022, I decided to move out with some girlfriends of mine, leaving without saying goodbye to avoid further confrontation. Fast forward to the summer of 2023, my boyfriend and I were living together in a new state, and he proposed. To my surprise, when he asked my parents for their blessings, they were supportive and enthusiastic. My parents were even flown out to witness our engagement. As we delved into wedding planning in the fall of 2023, my fiance's parents generously offered to finance the wedding. Strangely, my mother declined involvement in the planning, claiming she hated it. Despite repeated invitations from myself and my future mother-in-law, she insisted we handle everything on our own, a departure from the typical involvement of the mother of the bride. My mother-in-law did fly my mom out to New York for the wedding dress shopping, which was fun but my mother insisted on the trip that this was all she wanted to do. Come winter 2023, I received a text from my dad urging me to invite the Scots. I respectfully declined, citing the distress it would cause me on our special day. This refusal triggered a nuclear war within the family. My parents, adamant about the Scots' inclusion, declared they wouldn't attend the wedding. My dad accused me of starting my happy life by destroying his and my mother uninvited me to Christmas. In attempts to salvage the situation, I apologized and tried to explain my decision. However, my parents were unreceptive, hurling insults and baseless accusations, claiming my side of the family has been canceled. My mother then flipped the script and threatened to expose details on social media of my disrespect to the family if I didn't show up for Christmas. Despite exchanging Christmas and birthday greetings via text, I've not spoken to them about the situation. The pain of their absence and the harsh words linger as I approach my wedding day. I'm confused. I'm guilty. I'm in pain. The fallout, all because I refused to invite the Scots. Edit. We are having a destination wedding, and the festivities will begin three days prior to the wedding. So, if I caved in and invited the Scots, I would have to endure up to four days of them. I don't want to walk around the resort and turn around and have to see them and instantly get into a bad mood. Also, I am afraid if my parents decide to show up without the Scots that they will cause drama. Here are some relevant comments. One user said, OP, you said they were making derogatory comments about your boyfriend and him being adopted as well as belittling him. 
It seems like a perfectly reasonable decision for the boyfriend and his parents, who are the ones financing the wedding by the way, to decline to invite the Scott people. I don't think the bride or her parents have a choice in this matter. Then OP said, my future in-laws don't want the Scots there, but they would be willing to bite the bullet for me because they feel terrible about my parents not attending. They're such good people, but there's no way in hell I'm going to let that happen, especially since they are doing so much for me out of the kindness of their hearts. However, this actually came up in the argument with my parents and my dad literally said, I don't have to ask your fiance or his mother for permission to invite who I want to the wedding of my daughter. My parents say the Scots did everything out of protection. It makes me so angry. Then in the comment section, OP elaborated on what her fiance thinks of the situation. My fiance has been incredibly supportive. Most of all, he just feels terrible for me and feels that I have been put in a lose-lose situation by my parents. Either I invite the Scots and be absolutely miserable on our wedding, or I don't invite them and my own parents opt to not attend. He also doesn't want the Scots to attend, but he would be willing to bite the bullet if I was desperate for my parents to come. However, like many comments below, I don't want to start my life with an ultimatum from my parents. If I cave in now, who knows what they will do in the future. I am blessed to be marrying someone who is patient, caring, and supportive. Then OP elaborated as to why she thinks the parents want the Scots there. The Scots invest money into my dad's small business, and they split ownership 50-50. In the initial text from my parents, my dad said that he has been losing sleep for months thinking about how he was going to tell the Scots they're not invited to my wedding. I think my dad is afraid that if he doesn't invite them, the Scots will get pissed and pull out. This is speculation, but if this is the case, then some people are right and this is like a blackmail thing. But I don't want to feel guilty. Why do I have to invite people who give me a visceral reaction of anxiety and stress just because my dad is afraid to tell them no? Update. I woke up this morning to a bunch of text messages from my mother. She demanded that I end my engagement, cancel the wedding, quit my job, and move back to their home. She started saying things like, I know you're unhappy, it's okay, you tried, now it's time to come home, you have some maturing you need to do. This irks me so much. My parents literally gave their blessings for my marriage six months ago. Now they want me to change my entire life because they're mad they didn't get their way. I responded and said this is my life and if they don't want to respect my decisions, that's on them. But I am in utter shock. I am financially independent of my family. I have a great job, loving partner. How do parents come up with this stuff? So I'm usually one to clown on people because people on the internet will frequently jump to going to no contact almost immediately. But I feel like I need to jump on the no contact train because what? And I feel like if we learned a bit more about these parents, they've probably done some other bad stuff in the past. I'm just assuming. But man, this is ridiculous. It, it's clearly a business reason that they want the Scots to show up at their daughter's wedding. They don't care about the, the emotional reasons. They just care about the financial reasons. They're like, oh my god, what if they lose investment in our company or something like that? Man, that, that sucks, and I hate that her wedding is potentially getting ruined over that. But anyway, what do you guys think? Next story. Story number two. My friend told me she loves me four weeks before her marriage. My, 35M, friend B, 35F, just told me she loves me four weeks before our marriage, and I am not sure what I am supposed to do here. I want to know if I am doing the right thing. To give some context, I lost my wife two years ago. I have a five-year-old daughter. I have not dated in the last two years because I have major trauma from losing my wife. I still love her a lot and don't think I am ready to move on. I invested all my time into my daughter, who looks exactly like her mother by the way, and my work to keep my sanity for the last two years. I have been friends with B since we were in elementary school. We lived in the same neighborhood growing up and we were best friends. She is an awesome person and we were inseparable growing up. The weirdest part was we had completely different personalities. She was very outgoing and always had a lot of friends. I am a big introvert and B along with a few friends was all I needed. B was a serial dater and I don't remember any time since middle school since she was single. B and I never dated though. B and I also went to the same college. 
She never had a stable boyfriend, but just jumped from one relationship to another. I, on the other hand, did not date seriously until I was in my junior year. When I met my wife, she was a freshman, and we hit it off instantly. We fell for each other and spent all our time with each other. This strained my relationship with B, as I would generally hang out with my wife instead of her. That was the time B and I slowly started drifting apart. After college, I moved to a different town for my job, and B and I occasionally messaged each other, but nothing beyond that. B attended my wedding, and that was the last time I saw her. We kept in touch, but mostly by commenting on each other's pictures or keeping each other updated on significant life events. B did reach out to me when my wife passed away, and we talked on a phone call. Last year, B and her fiancé moved to my city. I was still grieving, and both have been amazing support for me and my daughter. My daughter loves dancing, and B helped me enroll her in dancing and gymnastics classes and sometimes takes her to them. I also became good friends with her fiancé, who is indeed an incredibly good man. My daughter also loves Auntie B, and B sometimes helps me babysit. Last week, B came to my house and asked if we could talk. Her tone sounded serious. She told me that over the last few months, she feels like she started to develop feelings for me and is not sure anymore if she wants to go ahead with the wedding. She felt I also had started developing feelings for her. I told her that I am not ready for any relationship before I can deal with my mental health, for which I go to a therapist frequently. She tried to convince me that she loved me, that we are soulmates, and she felt that we were meant to be together. However, I do not have the same feelings for her. I love her as a friend, but nothing beyond that. We were both emotional, but she said she was glad we talked about this, and she left after that. B called me that night and told me not to talk about our conversation to anyone. I thought a lot about it and decided that I would not tell her fiancé about B and my conversation from last week. I feel it's their relationship, and I do not have the right to ruin their moment if B decides to go ahead with the wedding. However, I feel guilty that her fiancé does not know anything about this and is going into a marriage where B might not be fully ready for it. Can you guys give suggestions on what I should do in this case? Am I wrong for not telling her fiancé about our conversation? Update. A month ago, I35M wrote a post regarding my friend Bree, 35F, telling me that she loved me only four weeks before her wedding. The last month has been crazy, and my whole world has turned upside down. Again, for context, I lost my wife two years ago, and we have a five-year-old daughter. Bree and her fiancé Jason, 33M, moved to our town a year ago, and we have reconnected as friends and they have done a lot to cheer me up during this year and bring my life to normalcy. After Bree told me that she loved me, I told her that I was still not ready to move on, as I still miss my wife. She said she understood, and I did not hear from her or Jason for a few days. The guilt was killing me, as I was not sure if I should tell Jason about what she told me. So, thanks to everyone who commented on the post, it helped me think the situation through. I finally called B after a few days and asked her to meet me for lunch. I talked to her and asked her if she was going to go ahead with her wedding, and she broke down and told me she was not sure. I told her that she should at least talk to Jason regarding her feelings and to not be dishonest with him. I also assured her that I would not say anything to Jay, but I just wanted her to be happy. She said she understood and left. That night, I put my daughter to sleep and was watching TV. Around 9.30 p.m., I heard a loud knock on my door, and it was Jason. I opened the door, and he was in tears. He started yelling at me and asked me why I had to steal Bree out of all the people in the world. I tried to calm him down, but he just kept on shouting. I was trying to get him to sit down on the bench on our porch. I told him my daughter was sleeping upstairs, but he slowly was getting more and more physical, and he punched me in the face, and I was able to push him off. I told him to get out of my house, and he sat in his truck and drove away. I immediately called Bree, and she was crying, and it did not sound well on the phone. She told Jason that she could not marry him because she had feelings for me. I was really scared for her after the physical altercation with Jason and told her to gather some clothes and get out of the house. She did just that and came to my place. I just didn't feel she was safe with Jason. I consoled her for almost two hours and was able to get her to sleep. The next morning, we had to call her parents to let them know about what had happened. Bree kept a brave face, but I could see how much she was hurting. Her parents asked her to take a few days off and immediately come back home, 
and she did take a flight in the evening to go back home. Over the next two days, the wedding was called off. Bree and I were talking every day, and she was just very exhausted. She talked to Jason a few times, and he kept on asking her to take more time to think. However, I think Bree just wanted to get out of it and decided to just break it off with Jason. Currently, Bree is staying with us for the last two weeks. She still has a job here and started going back to work last week. I have talked to Bree in detail about what happened. Bree told me that Jason and her were dating on and off for the last four years. Jason is not very career oriented and Bree is very good at her job. She felt he was a nice and reliable person, but was unsure about him from the start. She felt that she was not getting any younger, and hence they decided to get married. When she heard about my wife passing away, she just felt really bad and wanted to be around me to comfort me. When she got her big promotion, which meant she could work in a corporate office, she immediately chose my city and moved here. Jason also moved here and got a new job. She never had any romantic feelings for me back then. As she started hanging out with my daughter and me, she started feeling the bond we shared when we were growing up. Except I was the broken one, and she was taking care of me. She said that she realized that she was enjoying her time with us more than with Jason. She realized she made a mistake with Jason, and what she wanted was right in front of her. Hence, she slowly started thinking about me in that way, and finally told me about it. She knew her relationship with Jason was over the moment she confessed to me. It's a terrible situation, but I am glad that she realized that before getting married versus after. As for Jason, I feel bad for him. He is moving back to our hometown, closer to his family. He is currently in their apartment and will move sometime next month. I know a lot of you would be curious if we were dating. We are not dating. I don't think I can date anyone right now, and neither should Bree. She is my friend, and I am happy that she is staying with us and plans to be here until everything is sorted out. My daughter loves having Auntie Bree around too, so that's a bonus. Plus, it's really nice to see her slowly getting back to normal. Thanks again for helping me during my last post. Cheers. This has all the workings of a romance movie, except it doesn't, and Jason assaulted a man. That's, uh, not good. It seems like OP let that go. I, I don't know if I would've. As for Brie, I'm glad that she sorted and reflected all of this out before getting married and not after, because that would've been disastrous, and especially not after having kids if she did end up having them, because that would've been a train wreck, so good for her. Um, and it, as OP said, she's getting better, so, uh, happy ending? Kinda? Sorta? It could have ended a lot worse. I think we can all agree on that. But if you have any opinions, let us know in the comments. Next story. Story number three. Am I the a-hole for telling my mom that I regret wasting my youth for her? I, 26F, was raised by a single mother. My mother always told me that my father had abandoned us and that he never loved us and she always stressed that she had to work twice as hard to have a daughter. For some reason, those comments always made me feel like everything was my fault, and sometimes I felt like my mother would have been better off if I didn't exist. When I turned 16, my mother was seriously ill with breast cancer. At that time, we were living in a rented house, and the owner had asked for it. At that moment, I found out that my mother had not paid the bills or the rent. Mom couldn't work, so I had to leave school and start working. The first year was hard. I ate very little. It was more coffee than anything. The chemo, the work, everything was very exhausting. Even so, I never regretted taking care of my mother. I felt like it was the least I could do after she sacrificed everything for me. After a while, my mother overcame cancer and I decided to resume my mandatory studies. At first, my mother did not agree. She told me things like, it is humiliating that you finish your studies when I was never able to do so because I had to take care of you. At first, my mother did not agree. She told me things like, it is humiliating that you finish your studies when I was never able to do so because I had to take care of you. At first, I thought her words made sense but my boyfriend encouraged me to finish them. Now, this last year, my boyfriend has encouraged me to go to university. He even told me that I could take out a loan to pay for university and put him as executor. He has a very good salary. When I raised the idea with my family, everyone was happy, except my mother who made me feel bad again. I told him that this was my decision and I wanted to study because I wanted to get better opportunities. This time, my mother accused my boyfriend of putting absurd ideas in my head, that I was only going to get into debt in vain 
pain because I was no good for my studies and I most likely left them halfway, like I have done with everything in my life. I reminded her to never leave something abandoned of my own free will, but she reminded me that I left school because I was stupid and that's when I reminded her that I did that because she needed me. She said so many hurtful things at that moment. She told me that she never needed me, that I only extorted her, that she preferred to die before I took care of her. That's when I broke out and told her that I regretted having taken care of her all those years, and that I no longer wanted her in my life. My boyfriend says I was right to vent, but I feel like I was very cruel to her, and my family also thinks I was cruel. I don't know what to do. Maybe I should apologize. It's the only family I have, but I feel like I'm hurt a lot. Here are some relevant comments. User 1 said, I'm willing to bet she either drove away your biological father or never told him she was pregnant with you. Then OP said, I just did an update on what happened, but in short, my mother abused my father. She was 20 and he was 16. She wanted a wedding, but he found her disgusting, so he did not agree to marry my mother and my mother fled with me. Update. I have returned here to tell you a little bit about what has happened these months. After the fight with my mother, I decided to move in with my boyfriend. During the time I lived with my mother, I took care of the expenses such as electricity, water, food, and rent. I told my mother that I would help her for two months while she looked for a job and then she would have to fend for herself. But I decided to cut that agreement after finding out she did a horrible thing. I talked to my boyfriend about what I said here and he agreed with some of your comments about my mom being a narcissist and that she had done something to make my father leave us. You were right. I tried to investigate. It was difficult since no one wanted to give me an answer. Until my mother's sister, who is a little interested, offered to take me to someone who might know about my father in exchange for money. Finally, she contacted me with a sister of my father and I was able to meet him. He was happy to hear from me. Our first conversation was via video call. I discovered that my father always paid money to my mother for me and that he sent me gifts at Christmas and birthdays, gifts that my mother passed off as coming from her. I also found out that he is married, and I have a 16-year-old brother and an 8-year-old sister, and he also invited me to his wedding. When I asked him how he met my mother, he told me a pretty horrible story. They met on my father's sister's birthday. It should be noted that my mother was 20 and my father was 16. My mother got my father drunk and then they slept with each other. He doesn't remember much about that night because he deleted that horrible memory from his mind. She became pregnant after that night. My maternal grandparents demanded that he marry my mother, but he disliked her. In the end, my paternal grandparents demanded a DNA test and if I was his daughter, he would be financially responsible, but nothing more. He did get to know me, but he didn't want to marry my mother. He couldn't even see her. She harassed him and demanded a wedding. In the end, when I was four months old, my mother gave him an ultimatum. Either marry her or forget about his daughter. He couldn't imagine being with a woman like that and told him that he would take care of me, but it couldn't be anything from her. My mother decided to leave the city and cut all ties with him until I was one year old and she had a lot of debt. Then she told him that she would send him photographs of me in exchange for paying my expenses. He accepted and for years he asked to see me, but she refused. He could only see me in photos. After talking, I understood the whole situation. I asked him if we could meet face to face, and he accepted. I planned to visit him at his house, and thus meet his entire family. When I found out all of this, I cut off all financial aid to my mother. She came to my house and demanded that I paid the bills. Then I told her that I had finally talked to my father, and that now I knew what kind of woman she was. That drove her crazy, and she tried to hit me, but my boyfriend quickly took her out of the house. I didn't see her again until the day I was going to travel to meet my father. She called me crying, saying that her cancer had come back. I thought for a few moments that she was telling me the truth, and I almost went to her house, but my boyfriend was smarter, and he told me that before believing her, I should call the doctor who treated her before. I did exactly that and discovered that it wasn't true. I simply sent her a message, telling her not to come back to look for me, and I blocked her from everywhere. I finally met my father. We talked and cried a lot. His wife was very kind to me, and so were his children. He showed me all the photos he had of me, and the letters he wrote to me, but she sent them back. 
I still don't know how to face all of this. I just know that I don't want to see my mother again. P.S. I applied for some universities. I await a response, and if everything goes well, I will study pedagogy. My dream since I was very little. Here are some more relevant comments. User 2 said, How old are you, OP? I ask because you sound young and should not be responsible for financially supporting your mother. And what she did was vile and stopped you from having your father in your life. You're not the a-hole, but she is. And I am so pleased that your meeting with your father and his wife went positive. Then OP said, Hello, thank you. I'm 26 years old. I've taken care of her since she got sick when I was 15. And after she got better, she never worked for more than two months. That's why I gave her that time to take care of her. I was really willing to do it for longer, but my boyfriend told me that two months was enough time for her to get a job. I am also glad to know that I have a loving family. I still consider them a bit like strangers though. I've just been assimilating for the past month and coming to terms with the fact that my father was not the family abandoning monster that he was always painted as. Then user 3 said, um, I'm having doubts about this because doctors are not allowed to give information about their patients, even to family. To which OP replied with, I was my mother's caregiver for more than 10 years. And since I was 18, I served as her tutor on medical issues. The doctor didn't want to give me the information right away. I had to practically beg him. I don't know if it was ethical, but he knows my history with my mother. And then finally, user 4 said, Doesn't it just blow your mind that some comments from random Reddit strangers give you the inspiration to reconnect with your dad and his family? BTW, love your boyfriend, he's a keeper. And then OP said, Yes, my boyfriend is someone incredible. I'll be honest that I always believed in my mother's version. Even my boyfriend tried to convince me not to be guided by a single version, but I immediately told him to stop all attempts to talk about my father because I didn't want to go through that. I was very distressed by all of this, and he stopped insisting when he saw how upset I was. For years, I felt guilty that my father abandoned me, that he didn't love me. I felt so worthless that I didn't deserve to have the love of a mother or a father. It took me a long time to open up to another idea about my father. But reading certain comments made me resume the conversation with my boyfriend, and he gave me the impetus to know the truth. My boyfriend even convinced me to go to a psychologist to stop all these thoughts. My mother always said, those who go to psychologists are because they feel sorry for themselves, and she raised me with the thought that psychologists were only for idiots. Ironic that the person who needs the psychologist the most is the person who refuses and vows against them. Mother, we're looking at you. But you know what? Let's not focus on all the negatives because you already know that she's a terrible person. You already know what she's done wrong. Let's focus on the positives. And I'm glad that OP's got a great, awesome boyfriend who is there for her. I'm glad that she got to connect with her father. I'm glad that the father was like, yo, come on into my life. Meet my kids. Meet my wife. You want to come to the wedding? What an awesome dad. He just met his first daughter and he's like, I will do anything for you. Have my kidney. I, I, I don't know if he, if he went that far, but you know what? Good for OP. She's getting the mental health. She's got the emotional help and she's going to school, so she's got the financial help. Good for OP. And guys, we're going to end the video here. And remember, even if your Valentine's Day sucked, I still love you. Platonically. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. I-21F found a spy camera in my room after my stepdad, 36M, put a surveillance camera in my window. My stepdad, 36M, installed a surveillance camera positioned outside of my window to scan our backyard while him and my mother and two younger brothers go camping. I couldn't go on the trip since I had work, so I was staying home to house it and feed our animals. My stepdad recently put up new cameras outside, so I didn't see anything wrong with him positioning one outside my window. Come to find out the very next day, I had my boyfriend stay over and he found that the surveillance camera that was run from outside my window and into my room was being powered by one of those spy camera power blocks. For context, my relationship with my stepdad hasn't always been the best, and we tend to butt heads a lot. He said a lot of questionable things in the past that I've written off because he's my dad and I would never think he intended to be inappropriate or harmful. He's been in my life since I was eight years old. Of course, I'm second guessing everything now that I found this camera. It was positioned directly at my bedroom door from the far wall, so it has very direct view of my entire room, which I change in. I tried to desperately rationalize it and think that maybe it was just a mistake, like he grabbed the wrong charger box, or maybe he was just trying to look for intruders. But there really is no excuse for putting a camera in my bedroom. The camera even had an SD card in it. I'm beyond devastated. 
My stepdad even suggested I invite my boyfriend over to while they're gone so I have someone here, which is something he would never do considering he's made it clear before he doesn't want him over when no one is home because he doesn't want us having sex in his home. My boyfriend and I are going to go through the SD card to see if there is anything on it. I'm at a complete loss at how to even bring this up to my mom. I confided in my aunt and uncle since they live close by and they've been very supportive of me having a conversation with my mom about it. This whole situation is extremely upsetting. I at least have some family to support me as I navigate this, but I don't even know how to bring this up to my mom. This is obviously going to change everything. She had my five-year-old half-brother with him. My mind is racing with the consequences this is going to have on our family. Has anyone that has been in a similar situation have advice? How can I do this without causing extreme damage to the family? Although that may be impossible. Thank you in advance. Update number one. I don't want to make a whole new thread since I want to make a new update when my parents get back Monday, but I want to thank everyone for all the advice. I went to the police station tonight and filed a police report and turned in the spy camera with the SD card. The officer said this is a serious offense and I will likely get a call early next week from an investigator due to the severity of the situation. I'm planning on telling my mother about the police report after we have a conversation about this on Monday with my aunt and uncle present. As for people messaging me about my profile, thank you for reminding me to delete personal information. Please do not dox or try to seek any sort of justice for me as this may affect my case. Please respect my privacy during this time, please, as it may be crucial during this investigation. This was the hardest thing I ever had to do, but whatever this was, it's ending with me. I hope I can get justice for myself and any other victims who may have been violated by him since this will be heavily investigated, and the officer said it will likely be looked into further, such as warrants and looking for more SD cards. I'm hanging on by a thread, but the support I have is what's keeping me together. I'm staying with my boyfriend tonight to keep out of the house. Thanks again for all the love and supportive messages. I'll update again soon. Update number two. It's the next morning, and once my boyfriend wakes up, we're going back to my house today to look for any more secret cameras either in the bathroom or my brother's rooms, so I can submit it for more evidence. I'm iffy about searching my parents' room for more evidence, as it's likely he has a hidden camera in there to see me do it. Still on the fence about having a police officer search the house. If I do, I'll be sure to update after I'm finished and in a safe place. My aunt has offered to come help me with the search. Again, thank you everyone for the support. I'm trying as best as I can to do this the right way and get as much done with the time I have left. I'm mentally and emotionally drained, but I'll be seeking resources once all of this is said and done. I'm reading everyone's comments, so I'm taking all the advice I can get. Update 3 I probably won't be able to update for a few days since today is the day that I talked to my mom, but I just wanted to share the plan I made in hopes for what happens today. After talking with my aunt, uncle, boyfriend, and my cousin who is a civil lawyer, I've decided that I will speak to my mom in a separate location for my stepdad. Most likely, I'll have her meet me somewhere outside of our home. I'll have my aunt with me and this is where I'll explain everything to her. The camera, past uncomfortable experiences I've had with my stepdad that I originally brushed off because he was my dad, video footage of him deliberately setting it up and angling it, and footage of me in my room. I'm praying she understands why I had to go to my aunt instead of her considering she was not in town and I was worried for her safety if I told her what happened. She was stuck with him and my brothers about four hours away for the weekend. I'm hoping with my aunt there and her being away from my stepdad that it will prevent her from reaching out of anger and searching for him and escalating the situation then and there, and I hope my aunt can provide some support for myself and her. I'm prepared for her to go through the same processes I went through, such as reasoning and denial, but with the evidence, there's no possible way she can deny it. I'm preparing myself for the worst. I just hope that I can be strong for her and support her as this all hits her like it did me. I will not be returning home or facing him today. My boyfriend will be on standby to pick up my brothers if needed since my aunt has offered for them to stay with us so my mom can talk to my stepdad without them there. I'll ask my mom to meet me and of course not to tell my stepdad about the circumstances. Maybe she can tell him she's going to the grocery store. I don't want him getting any hints that she could be meeting with me. I know I've said it a lot but I truly do appreciate the support system. I have not only with my family but but here too. This has been a nightmare, but hearing everyone's stories about this proving it's way too common is what is helping me get through this and pushing me to do the right thing. Not only am I a victim in this, but my boyfriend as well and God knows who else. The confrontation won't happen for about another 7 hours, so in the meantime, I'll be reading over comments and preparing myself for what comes today. Thank you guys. I've read a lot of these stories. I have to say, this has been one of the ones where like she came in with a solid, like 
solid game plan. She's like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You're going to be here. I'm going to be doing that, right? That's a horrible situation, but you know what? She got through it, presumably. I don't know. We need an update to see what happens next. There was so much buildup, but there's no payoff. We have to get an update. All right, next story. Story number two. I'm F20 tired of pretending that I'm not happy that I'm pregnant with M25's baby. I am 28 weeks pregnant with my first child, and you know what? I'm happy, but I'm not allowed to express this. My older sister, F27, has fertility issues and was told in her teens that her chances of having kids is very slim. Unfortunately, she has miscarried twice, with one of those times being this year. I found out I was pregnant shortly after her miscarriage. No one really had anything positive to say, and I was advised by many family members to wait a while until I told my sister. I told her when I was around 16 weeks. Even after I told her, I was still advised to keep things private. One day, I just decided to post on Instagram that I was having a baby. My cousin messaged me shortly after telling me that that was so insensitive of me to do and I need to take it down and stuff like that. Thanksgiving was like a week ago, and I decided to spend it with my side of the family, and I was alone because my boyfriend decided to spend it with his family. Mind you, I'm in my third trimester, so anyone can practically tell that I'm pregnant regardless of what I wear. When I showed up, my aunt told me that I needed to change before my sister got there because my bump was too showy. And not only that, but while we were all there together, all the focus switched to me and I just kept getting told I'm too young and I should focus on other things, not a baby. They went as far to suggest that I should give the baby to my sister. When I spoke up, I was told that they were just trying to look out for me and help me considering I'm young and pregnant. I call BS, because if they were really just trying to support me, wouldn't they try their best to be by my side rather than keep trying to take away from my pregnancy? Is it just me, or is this going beyond protecting my sister slash worried for me since I'm younger? Hey, that sucks. You got great news. You're in the next step of your life, and your whole family's like, no, stop doing that. Like, what? You're too showy. Girl, I'm pregnant. What do you want me to do? Suck it in for three hours while we're eating Thanksgiving turkey? That's insensitive. It's not insensitive, but it's not well thought out, I suppose, right? Like, the sister is trying to get pregnant, and the person making this post is. So I can understand how that might affect her, but they're going way too hard on the lady who made this post. Okay, next story. Story number three. My 20F boyfriend, 20M, turned into a completely different person for a day, and I want to break up. We've met around a half year ago, but started dating only last month. We worked at the same company at that time. He has a playboy sort of look, fit, well-groomed, longish hair, sparkly studs in his ears, and a pretty boy face to top it all off. I thought he was your typical womanizer sort. One day, he bought me a cup of coffee, and we started chatting. He turned out to be the opposite of a playboy. He's a very shy, reserved, borderline chaste person. A bit awkward, but in a charming way. We bonded over our love for classic Russian literature, Soviet cinema, and tea. It took him a couple weeks of break room meetups to finally ask me out on a friendly date. After a few months of going out, he asked me if I wanted something more serious with him, and for the first time in my life, I decided to commit to a relationship. After that night, he left for a two-day trip with his college mates. We made plans to go out the evenings of his return. He invited me to a cafe not far from my place, told me to close my eyes and wait for him. I felt him tap on my shoulder, and when I excitedly turned around to face him, expecting a surprise present he promised me, he was standing there empty-handed. He explained that he left the present on the train which isn't totally out of the realm of possibility with how clumsy he can be, but it really put me off. I ordered some food for myself, but he opted only for dessert. Again, I found it pretty weird, but he told me that he wasn't hungry. He didn't offer to pay for my meal, which once again is fine, I am making more money than him, so it is understandable. But very strange, since in our culture, it is unacceptable for a man not to pay for his date. We were going to see a movie after dinner, but he didn't bother buying us tickets. I can understand even that, because I haven't explicitly told him to do that. So, we had to settle for a tea house nearby. In the tea house, he seemed wholly confused by everything, asking the stupidest questions. He even didn't know how to turn the kettle on. Weird, because our shared love for tea and culture surrounding it was one of the first things we bonded over. He again let me pay for our table, and by that point, I was very irritated with him, but still let him walk me to my house. On our way, we stumbled into a low fence. I decided to walk around it, but he tried to hop it and, as expected, fell over. Thankfully, there was enough snow to soften the fall. He wasn't hurt, so I felt it was appropriate to laugh and jokingly asked him to stay there so I can take a photo. This may seem like a jerk move on my part, but since the beginning of our, at first, friendship, we've been teasing each other. He calls me a know-it-all nerd, and I call him a brainless idiot. Whenever he would screw up at work, I would make fun of him, and he did the same. Both of us have pretty thick skin, so I didn't think he would be offended by me laughing at him falling over a fence, of all things. 
But instead of laughing with me, he quickly got up and walked over to me and threw me on the ground. And not in the snow. I hit my head on the icy asphalt pretty hard. I was absolutely horrified by this weird reaction. I would have never expected this sort of behavior from him. He didn't even apologize, just tried to laugh it off. Then, when I told him to call the taxi, he didn't have enough money for a ride home. When I asked him why he decided to ask me out this late if he didn't have enough money to return home, he told me that he doesn't carry that much cash to stop himself from overspending. Sounds like BS, but he's still in college living on a tight budget, so who knows. I was done with him for the evening, but couldn't just leave him on the street in the winter, so gave him some cash to pay and tipped the driver and called a cab. It was the worst date I've ever been on. I felt so weirded out by his strange behavior that I didn't check his messages for the next two days. When I finally responded, he didn't apologize for anything except for throwing me on the ground. And even that he didn't do properly. I'm sorry I didn't realize you were so fragile. That was his apology. Other than that, he was back to his caring and thoughtful old self, kept checking in on me throughout the day, asking if I needed something, offering to hang out again. He apologized again properly, but I still have a bad feeling about that day. Now I'm thinking about breaking up, but I'm not so sure. He has never acted that way with me or anybody else. He acted so out of character. Maybe I'm just scared of commitment and looking for a way out, over dramatizing the situation, or is it a sign that something is off? I don't want to throw out a good friendship because of one bad day. That's his twin. No, his clone. He got replicated by aliens. I don't know. That's really weird. I've never done that. And I've never met anyone like that who has such a weird day where they throw someone on the ground? I've had bad days, but I don't resort to violence. That is so odd. I don't know. I feel like she'd be like, hey, what happened that day? I want an update on that. Be like, hey, what happened? Can you tell me what happened on the trip? Something happened on the trip. Anyway, next story. Story number four. Boyfriend, 35M, proposed to me, 29F, with an expensive engagement ring that he bought to propose to his ex, but didn't. Is it unreasonable to return it to him and insist that I don't want a ring intended for someone else? I knew about this $20,000 ring early on when we dated and how he's been trying to sell it away. I even tried to help sell it, but it just remained unsold because you get maybe only a quarter of it back. Financially speaking, he's not tight. He has a lavish lifestyle, but he has also taken a pay cut for a new role and I'm still in the beginnings of my business setups. So I get the pragmatic approach that he wanted to reuse it given the fact that he didn't get around to proposing, especially if we want to plan for our future. When he pulled it out two days ago on our trip, I was surprised and upset, but then he managed to convince me that it matters who the ring ends up with. A little background about the trip. We split the trip. I did not expect to be proposed to. And I know that when he planned to propose to his ex, he even booked a week-long five-star resorts vacation at a tropical island. I knew this because early on in the relationship, he invited me to go on the trip with him, but later on I found out that he had the ring. I put two and two together, which he confirmed the trip was supposed to be when he proposed to his ex. So adding to the recycled ring, I feel like he didn't put much effort to the proposal compared to when he planned to propose to his ex. Maybe financially he did better before the pay cut? But I just feel like some other chick before me enjoyed him in his best times and I'm getting the leftover scraps. The ring was not even the right size for me. It was loose on my finger. I'm thinking to talk to him about the ring and how it bothers me. I'm grateful he is thinking of me as someone who wants to spend his life with and even be proposed with such an expensive ring. It's just that the fact that I have to wear it for a very long time until I die but then it would be a reminder to me that there's another person from before that's supposed to be this ring's owner. And now it made me feel like I'd be comparing everything. But I've accepted the ring and the proposal and don't know if it is unreasonable of me to do that. What should I do to not feel this way? This is a bit of a tricky one. I feel like you could get split down in the middle with this one. I see where she's coming from where it's like, you know, I, essentially I am getting the leftovers, right? But also love is love, right? Like it's a $20,000 ring, right? Like why waste that? I, I also, I guess it doesn't fit on her finger that well, but I can also feel like, oh, I, like wearing this ring intended for someone else just kind of feels icky. Like I bought you these clothes, but you know, someone, it's like a hand-me-down wedding ring. Like, oh, um... I don't know, that's a tough one. I don't have an answer for this one. What do you think, people watching this video? Okay, I'm done, bye.